I'm Hope. Welcome back to your virtual Sunday school class. Um, once again, um, it's our pleasure to, to share this with you. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for being a part of it. Um, we're, we're hearing good things about the new format, so we hope everybody's enjoying what we're doing here with the slides and all. Uh, remember, you can always give feedback. Uh, we're going to monitor that on Facebook on Sunday morning when it's live, when it goes out. Yep. And um, if you have any questions or want to make a comment about something, please do that. Uh, just let us know. We, we would love to, to hear from you. We want it, want it to be interactive. Yeah, we might we might give you some questions or try to spark some discussion. Um, we want everybody to contribute, you know, just like we would in a classroom. Exactly. Yeah. Um, don't comment about our clashing red shirts. Okay? <laughs> yeah. We've already talked about it. We know they clash. We know they're the wrong shade yeah. to match. Uh, you're just going to have to put up with it. Yeah. They're just it's just something yeah. you're going to have to tolerate for the next few minutes. Okay. We'll we'll try to do better next time. We'll we'll, we'll also go blue or something. Well, I was just going to say I don't know that it'll get better. Uh, not yeah. with me, anyways. I'm <laughs> I'm not going to be more fashionable. I, I'll just go ahead and admit that. Fair enough. Yeah. All right, Greg. Do you want to lead us in prayer, please? And we'll of course. Pray. Yeah. All right. Let's pray. Dear God, I thank you for this time to come together over your word, God. I just ask that you bless it and bless this time, God, and use it for your purpose and your glory. I ask that you use it to grow us closer to you, God, and closer together as a church. And um, just help it, God, to be a light into our path and a lamp into our feet. Um, I thank you for all of those joining us on online and over Facebook or YouTube or however it may be, God. Um, just be with the, any prayer requests they may have and uh, help them and remind them that you're always with us and that you care for us. And we thank you for caring for us the way that you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Okay, so let's get started here. Let's see if this is going to work for us. Ah, yeah. There we go. Okay, so we're starting a new unit now. We just we finished up our Ten Commandments. Yep. Right. I know we kind of rushed the last three together. They did. Yeah. But, <laughs> they got squished yeah, together. I know. I know. Okay. So anyway, we're starting a new unit, and this new unit is on commitment. Okay. The first one we're going to talk about today is Christ's commitment to us, and it's a study out of the fifth chapter of Romans. So if you got your Bible, go ahead and turn to the fifth chapter of Romans. Romans is always a fascinating study, and Romans has been called the Constitution of the Christian faith, and, and I think that's a that's a very appropriate mm -hmm. title for it. Yeah. Some really seriously deep theology in the book of Romans, and we could spend a lot of time uh, just going through it verse by verse of it, and um, of course we don't have, we can't do all of it, but the verses that in today's lesson are, are pretty deep, pretty powerful, and uh, we're, we're going to do our best to kind of illuminate uh, what God's message is uh, mm -hmm. in in the fifth chapter today, okay? So uh, if you found it already, uh, Romans chapter 5, and I think we're going to start, uh, I think it's like verse uh, uh, 6, yeah, verse 6 is where we're going to start with, okay? Uh, and the Bible says this, For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Now, there's a lot there to, eat, to unpack in just that very short verse. When we, that's everybody, yep. okay, that's every single person um, that has lived on, on earth um, up until the point where Christ came. And he says, for when we, everybody, was with, without strength. Um, John Calvin had a term for that, and I want to share that really, real quick. We're not getting into Calvinism this morning, but I just want to uh, get real quickly. When you, when you talk about being without strength, one of the tenets of, of Calvinism was called total depravity. And that, that's something I think we, we can agree on. Meaning that mankind did not have an ability in themselves to save themselves. Okay, They, they couldn't. The, the only thing they could do is respond to the gospel message. message. God had to initiate it. Okay, and he he still does that today through the Holy Spirit when he initiates a call to salvation, a call to service, whatever. God takes the initiative. He yeah. does the first thing. If left to ourselves, we wouldn't come to God. We wouldn't mm -hmm. turn to Him. We wouldn't seek repentance. But He calls us, and that's that's the important thing. We were without strength completely, and yet He took the initiative and and called us 
to repentance. Now, there's another part of that verse that I think is important, too. What did Paul mean when he said, in due time? He said, um, for in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Why did he wait all those years between the fall, when Adam mm -hmm. sinned, and the early first century yeah. to send Christ to die for our sins. What does he mean by in due time? Well, like everything God does, he does it right on time, exactly when it should have happened. So the question is, why wait so long? Well, look what happened during all that time. Okay, the whole Old Testament. You see God's people given immense grace, mm -hmm. just opportunity after opportunity to repent, um, there were so many works within the law yeah. that they had to do, and they kept, and he, all the many things God did, the miracles, like bringing them out of Egypt, crossing yeah. the Red Sea, and uh, the conquest of Canaan, and all the things God did for them, and yet, even with all that grace and all that mercy he was showing to them, they would serve him, and then they would fall away, yeah. and destruction would come. And then they would come back and then destruction over would come. And over. over and over yeah. again. God is showing you can't do this yeah. in your strength. He's proven mm -hmm. the first part of that verse. Man was uh, without their own strength. They couldn't do it mm -hmm. on their own. So in due time, after all of his displays of mercy and grace, Christ came. And that was his plan yeah. all along. I mean, it's mm -hmm. not that oh, this was the last option. No, no, no. Always Christ was going to come and to redeem mankind. And that's what he did. When he died on the cross, he did it at the exact right time so that mankind could look back and, and see their faults and their failures, but then look to Christ and know that he and the work he did there on Calvary was sufficient yeah. for everything. It really was perfect timing. Exactly, yeah. 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 We've, perfect timing. I've heard of studies that were done, and they talked about you know not just the spiritual timing, <laughs> But also the physical timing of what the condition was the world the world was in at that time, and how the Romans had expanded their empire and oh, they yeah, built yeah. a road system, and so missionaries were allowed to go and information was fro uh, mm -hmm. flowing more freely oh, yeah, than yeah, ever yeah. before. Uh, yeah, and, and, and don't even get me started on the language of, uh, of yeah. the scripture. Right? Oh yeah, that's yeah. one of my my, mm -hmm. my hobbies. There, I love the, the yeah. It really was. The, about that. I mean, like every you had Greek perfect now, time been introduced so that the New Testament can be written. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was it was perfect time. Yeah. Perfect time. On top of the spiritual and oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So in due time, yeah. Christ died. But okay, so let's move on here to the next verse, uh, verse seven. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet. And the King James says peradventure, which means kind of like perhaps. I put that in there for you so you understand what that word means. Yet perhaps for a good man, some would even dare to die. Now it's not. It, it's not the exclusive thing to, you know, for, for, for yeah. to die for somebody. We we have people, our soldiers, they do that all the time, mm -hmm. you know, and they, yeah. many, many have given their lives. Um, law enforcement risks their lives. Soldiers risk their lives. Um, and I'm sure that we, I, as a husband and a father, I would risk my life to save my yeah. family. So it's not that people aren't willing to die for each other. They, they are doing that. Um Perhaps, Paul says, for a good yeah. man, some would even dare to die. But Here, here's where but, it comes. In, yeah. yeah, here's where he says in verse eight. But God commendeth His love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Yeah. We hadn't shown. <laughs> any potential I know. I know. <laughs> at all. It's not that we got to the point where he's like, you know, they're that's almost good enough. there. That's good enough. Yeah. No, 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 no. Uh -uh. While we were yet sinners, while we were completely yeah. depraved and had absolutely no hope, that's when Christ came. Um, he saw that there was nothing. Uh, well, Mankind finally, I think, realized itself yeah. there was nothing they could do. God knew it all along that man would never be able to redeem himself. But mankind is starting to see without without anything, without Christ, God taking initiative, we're hopeless. We're completely mm -hmm. without hope. But while we were yet sinners. Now, I love this 
that that's still true yeah. today. Okay, so you don't get right. You don't fix yourself up enough to get saved. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. Okay, you can't start a regiment of coming to church. Start a regiment of prayer. Start yeah. a regiment of Bible reading. Yeah. Okay, you've done step one, two, and three. Now you're to the point where you can be saved. That's never uh, happened. That, uh, that it doesn't happen that no. way. Okay, God initiates his love for us through the conviction of the Holy Spirit while we are yet sinners, okay? Yeah. While we're right in the middle of our sin, we don't get to the point where we earn it. You yeah. can't earn it, okay? So in our deepest and our darkest sins, God reaches way, way out to us Yeah, through what Christ did on the cross, okay? While the world that, at that time was dark, same is true for ourselves today. While we're deep in our sins, that sacrifice of Christ reaches us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Think about when you got saved. Were you climbing a ladder to get holier and get closer to God? No. I, I, I wasn't. I no. really died. Yeah. Because, but yeah. he found you at that, at that low point when you were yet in your sins. Christ died for us. Yeah. That should make us all rejoice. Yeah, Rome, Romans 5.8 is one of the biggest, I mean, it, this verse, like, to me, encapsulates everything. I know John 3.16 is the mm -hmm. most well known. This is the verse that I think hits the nail on the head, yeah. you know, and it, and it drives home exactly how God feels about us. You know, like you were saying, you don't earn it. You don't. You don't try to earn it. You know, you can't do anything. You know, talking about, you know, we, we had no strength. Mm -hmm. We couldn't do anything. And not only couldn't we do anything, but when we were at our worst, you know, um, when we did our verses, we, we did, um, you can see some of it in the background, but some of the artwork in the classroom is mm -hmm. the students, um, the students' uh, favorite verses. And one of them says, you know, while when I was at my worst, Christ died for me. Right. Christ loved me. Right. You know, and it's quote, you know, this verse, you know, and this is the biggest example of the point of our lesson. You know, even at our worst, Christ was fully committed to love and to bring us to God. Right. Even at our worst. Mm -hmm. And that's what and that's, verse 8 is saying. That's but commitment. God commendeth his love toward us. You know, we have a term in the South that we're fixing to get ready. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and, and that... We're, you can't be you can't be fixing yeah. to get saved. No. Okay. Mm -mm. He, God says He's going to find you where you are. No. But okay. that's that's a key pivotal verse. Yeah. It's part of you know, like you were mentioning Romans, the Romans road. You know, that's right. It's it. You have to understand this. You cannot earn it. Right. God loves you even though you don't deserve it. Right. And it was His initiation. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is the much more passages. Yes, this, these are great. Not verse 9 and 10, Romans 5, verse 9 and 10. So he says, Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Mm -hmm. Much more then. Not, not just that he saved us. Yeah. Much more. Much more. Much yeah. more. Yeah. Much more. I love that. Being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. And verse 10, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. So mm -hmm. not not just, yeah, no. but much more. Yep. That's what I love about that. You really think about those verses. Read those on your... Uh, on your own sometime and you really think of those two words much more he didn't just come and, and pull us out of that that sin we were in but much more yeah. he gave us so much more he gave us life and if uh, and that verse 10 where it says for if when we were enemies we were reconciled by god so at the yeah. point where we didn't want anything at all to do with god mm -hmm. He showed us tremendous grace. What Paul's saying there is if, if he would show that much grace then, imagine what he's going to give you 
Now that now yeah. that you're a part of his yeah. family, now that you're his child, mm -hmm. you know that you're worshiping and, and reverencing him much more. Yeah, he, <laughs> okay. he, I can hear him. He's like, do you get it? Like, do you understand? Yeah, yeah. Like, it's so much more. So much yeah. more. It's just, I, and I, I love yeah. that. If when we were enemies, we were at the at the farthest point from God. Yeah. He showed us that much love, much more than now that we are saved, what what will he give us in our lives? Mm -hmm. So much joy, so much peace. Yeah. Um, and, and he says right there, the very next verse, verse 11, and not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. So that much more involves yeah. joy. It would be enough just to be saved. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. If if we were miserable and saved, yeah. we'd be in good shape. Yeah. But uh, much more, mm -hmm. much more, much yeah. more. Say that to yourself. Much more. <laughs> He's given us so much like more. That. Not only so, but we also joy, he says, in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Okay. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. Okay. Um, verse 12. Now look at this one. This one, we got to spend a minute here on this one. <laughs> Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Yep. What do we call this in theology? It's called original sin. Right? It's the idea that because Adam sinned, we are all sinners. Yeah. Okay. Now that can get really complicated really quickly when you when you think about it. We I remember studying this idea of, of what they call the federal headship of Adam, okay. and it was like you know it's very deep stuff. But yeah. It's this this idea that because Adam sinned, and he represented all of humanity. Okay, mm -hmm. all of humanity that was to come after him. In him, all of humanity was represented there. And because he sinned, that sin is present in every single person born. Yeah, from that point forward. Um, Adam and Eve earned their sin. Mm -hmm. Okay, we were born with it. Would you agree with that? Does that sound yeah. right? I mean, I'm just, I, yeah. I guess. I, I've earned a lot. But. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I, I know. I have to. Yeah. I've earned. I, yeah. I've done on my own. But I, yeah. e even no, if you yeah. have, have so, been the best mm -hmm. little boy ever. Oh, yeah. You'd yeah. still be a sinner. Yeah. And Deserving I, of hate. Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. Because we were born mm -hmm. with it. Okay. Yeah. And that's a that's not a new idea. That's not theology no. that was worked out. David understood that. Yeah. Um, he, he, even in his psalm, uh, Psalm 51, 5, David says, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Yeah. So he got, he understood that oh, very yeah. clearly. Mm -hmm. That it, it really doesn't matter how hard you yeah. try. It doesn't matter who your mom and dad was, nope. anything like that. We're born in mm -hmm. sin. Humanity was cursed from that very first sin. So um, every single person that has come since then... Yeah. Is is a sinner, and therefore something's got to be done about. It. They have to then be reconciled mm -hmm. to God, redeemed back to God in some way. Yeah. And Adam, it, 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 Adam had to be redeemed. I have to be redeemed. Greg has to yeah. be redeemed. Everybody, okay. And so it said. So death passed upon all men. That's right. That all have sinned. All have sinned. Yeah. Well, let's skip down to verse eighteen now. Uh, therefore, as by the offense of one, who's that one? Adam. Adam, Adam right? Mm -hmm. By the offense of one, judgment came upon all men. To what end? To condemnation. Mm -hmm. Even so, by the righteousness of one, who's this one? Jesus. Jesus mm -hmm. Right? The free gift came upon who? All men. all men unto justification of life. Now, remember, what are we saying here? And the wording is very particular. The free gift came upon yeah. all men. Mm -hmm. But you, have, what do you have to do with a gift? You have to receive, receive it. it. Yeah, yep. right. You got to accept it. 
Okay. It was that free gift is offered to everybody. He says, all men unto justification of life. Right. Um, and so our only job is to receive and accept it. Okay. We can't initiate it. We can't create it. We certainly can't earn it. Yeah. We can accept it. Okay. Just like um, Adam was condemned, we are condemned. And we must accept the righteousness, see there, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men. We don't have righteousness. There, there's no yeah. right, there's none righteous, no, not one, the Bible mm -hmm. says, right? So no. uh, I, I don't have righteousness that will justify me before God, but Jesus did. Yeah. And that's what he's saying here. So by the righteousness of one, that being Jesus Christ, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. Okay? And then 19, that's the, we're, we're rolling yeah. on here. Yeah. For as by one man's disobedience, many yeah. were made sinners. Mm -hmm. and, and a good translation of that could also be the many, meaning yeah. the whole, mm -hmm. the all. Okay? Yeah. So we're one to whole. Uh, unto the whole. Yeah, right. yeah. Uh, unto one man's obedience, everybody was made a, a sinner. Okay, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Mm -hmm. Christ showed obedience to his Father's will when he died on the cross, right? Yeah. Um, even in the garden as he was praying, not my will, but thy will be yeah. done. Did he want to suffer? No. No. Of course not. I wouldn't want to suffer. But he was willing and he was obedient even unto death, even the death of the cross, it says. Um, because of Adam's sin, because of his Adam's disobedience, yeah. Christ had to show obedience to the Father to redeem mankind. Um, a lot of parallels that, that Paul makes here. But let's compare for just a second this idea of the first Adam versus the last Adam. Okay. And uh, this is not in your uh, Sunday school book, but yeah. I, I wanted to pull this in for a second. This comes out of, uh, it's, again, it's Paul, but it's over in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 45. It says, And so it is written, The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. Okay, mm -hmm. He was given breath. He was given life, given, yeah. made into a living soul. The last Adam, which is another name for Christ, okay, yeah. was made, and now King James says, a quickening mm -hmm. spirit. Yeah. And if you look at those words, it means a life-giving mm -hmm. spirit. Okay, So break it down for a second. The first Adam was given life. Mm -hmm. The last Adam Gives. was a giver yeah. of mm -hmm. life. Okay, that's I that's like what that. they're that's yeah. what they're saying here. Okay, yeah. so Christ is because he can get made. It was made a quickening spirit. He was made a giver of life, something that brings quickening spirit means something that yeah. brings something to life. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's the beauty of it. There, um, that's how you compare the first and the last Adam. The one, the first Adam was given life. The last Adam was a giver of life. Okay, okay, moving on. Uh, verse 20, Romans 5, verse 20. Moreover, the law entered. Okay, talking about the law. You know, we talked about the Ten Commandments. Yeah. Yeah. Right? We've been through those. Uh, we understand how uh, the Mosaic law works. Um, it's like a mirror. You kind of, you hold it up and you see the sin of mankind in the law. The law mm -hmm. didn't cure anything ever, period. Okay? Yeah. Uh, and what, what Paul is saying here, moreover, the law entered that offense may abound. Okay, so did the law cause offense? No, the law simply revealed yeah. the offense. Okay, so when compared to a perfect law, we see how offensive man really is. We see what a yeah. lawbreaker what a sinner man truly is. You, and you I, have I have to have that. You, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, it was necessary. Yeah. It was necessary. Mm -hmm. In due time, Christ came, but I think also in due time, the law came because the law yeah. was showing mankind his depravity, how, how needful he was of the redemption that can only come from Christ. And uh, as I was thinking about that, I came up with this weird analogy. And see if you can yeah. follow me here, yeah. okay? 
Uh, so I'm, I'm, to me, the Old Testament law is a lot like COVID-19 testing. All right. How, Bobby, is hey, the Old Testament law like COVID-19? Yes. I'm sure you're wondering. Yo, okay. Okay. We okay. all are. Yeah. Yeah. We're all wondering. Okay, let, yeah. me, let, me, let me explain it to you here. See if you can follow my logic. Yeah. You, you agree or disagree with me? All right. So I've not been tested for COVID, okay. have you? Yes. You have been tested. Yes. Uh, you're negative. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> you are negative, right? Yes. Okay, awesome. And it was Fantastic. a while ago. Okay. I didn't I, mention I've never had a, me, yes. I, I never met the criteria to be tested, so yes. I haven't been tested. Yeah. So what does testing do? Testing only tells you if you have it or not. Yeah. Okay, when that, did you get that swab stuck I like, did. literally up into your oh, yeah. brain? Yeah. I've heard it's bad. It, it was it was pretty bad. Yeah. Okay. It's it's supposed to be a lot better now though. They've 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 I I hope updated I the tests and they're not nearly as invasive. Really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I, yeah. I, I hope I don't have a need for that. But yeah, if if you had been positive, mm -hmm. would the testing have helped you in any way? No, it, it, it didn't help at all. Yeah, it, did yeah. Nothing. it always showed you that you either have it or don't have it. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Gave me something to compare it to. Right. right? Yeah. Exactly. So to me, the law was a lot like this. It can't cure. The disease, no matter it only how shows much you, you that it. you have it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now you can either have it or not have it when it comes to COVID, but when it comes to sin, everybody tests yeah. positive. <laughs> yeah. Hey, congratulations. Yeah. It's 100%. You got it. It's 100%. Uh, everybody has it. You're all sinners. <laughs> but, but with your analogy, though, there are a lot of people that don't know they have it. That's true. They really don't. And if they had not been tested or shown the yeah, law, they don't know they have shown sin. grace, they shown the, mm -hmm. what the, the Bible has to say to them. Yeah. They may not know. Yeah. And that, and that if you don't know and you hear, you know, everybody has sin, that can be a little. Because you know, what comes by hearing? Yeah. Faith. Yeah. Right. So we yeah. need to, we need to yeah. share. We need yeah. to tell. Right. Well, and it comes with it, you know, it'd be a little scary to find out, you know, you have sin, you didn't know you had sin, yeah. but now you've got something to compare it to, you know, with the Old Testament and with the law. But, don't worry, when you were at your worst, God gave you Jesus. Amen. Christ died for you. That's right. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. We you, our worst. Yes, yeah. yes, you do have sin, but don't worry. Right. Jesus died for you. Amen. Thank, Thank you. Lord. All right. Oh, and I love that I left the, the last oh, part yeah, of that I verse like off this. for just a second because, oh, man, mm -hmm. listen to this. The rest of verse 20 there. Yeah. But where sin abounded, and it did abound. It did. Everywhere, 100% coverage, yeah. total world pandemic, <laughs> yeah. everybody was yeah. guilty. We've been in a pandemic for of sin thousands for a long of years. Time. Yeah. yeah. But where sin abounded, mm -hmm. grace did and here are those words again. <laughs> yeah. Much more. I love it. Much more. Grace did much more abound. How many of you can testify to that this morning? Amen. Sin abounded in our hearts, our minds, our souls. But what came upon us that abounded even more? The grace, grace. of God. Oh, I mm -hmm. love that. Yeah. I love that. Where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. I can Amen. I can hear Paul getting wound up here. Ah, no, this is this it. reads like a it. sermon. You can almost hear yeah. the passion in him of yes. saying, you know, but where sin abounded, grace did much, much more, more abound. abound. Yeah, and you can exactly. just hear him getting wound up. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, I gotta love it. Gotta love it. And then look, well, the the final verse here, and we're gonna we're gonna start to to bring this kind of to a wrap up here. Mm -hmm. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So think about this for just a second. Um, what did sin bring? The end result of sin, death. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. But grace, which abounded more, yes. reigns through righteousness, even unto eternal life. Sin brought death. Grace, through the righteousness of Jesus, brings us eternal life. So that's when we talk about Christ's commitment to us, his obedience to God the Father, that he would uh, sacrifice himself 
on a cross mm -hmm. for sinners that were totally depraved, totally without strength, going back to that very first verse, verse yeah. 5, without any hope at all. We didn't, it's not that we could, you know, when you're trying to pull somebody up and you're like, if you can get a foothold, if they can, yeah, you know, they can mm -hmm. get a good grip and they can step I on something. might be able to do it. Yeah. That. Yeah. No, no, no. We couldn't do anything. No, we couldn't. We couldn't help him save us. No. <laughs> you know, we couldn't. He had to do it all. That was his commitment to us, though, that he would give him himself uh, and his righteousness to bring us, like verse 21 says, into eternal life. Um, Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. For that kind of commitment. May my faith reflect that kind of love that you've shown for us. That's my prayer. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's going to, that's going to do it for us uh, this week. Um, uh, you have anything else, Greg? Did you want to no, I love, I like yeah, starting it out this great. way, this Good lesson. Stuff. Cause I mean, talk about all in. Oh so you, yeah. You need, yeah. we need to know, you know, before we get all in, just like looking at, you know, something to reflect on how all in Jesus was for mm -hmm. us. You yeah. know, he gave it all. For us, Amen. so we we should too. Amen. All right. Well, folks, a um, lot to think about in those verses. Go back and read them for yourself again. Think yeah. about those two words: much more, yeah. much more, much more. Thank you, Lord. Okay, guys, we'll see you on uh, eleven o'clock service. Mm -hmm. And if you're watching the video, then uh, we'll uh, see you next week. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Take care. All right.